In my hands, I have the M4 MacBook Air and the M3 Pro MacBook Pro. And in today's video, I want to go over my real world opinions in use over using both of these machines as laptops while traveling. Now, there's going to be different target audiences for both the M4 MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. Now, just to put it out there, this is the M3 Pro MacBook Pro. It is not the M4, so the major difference is going to be it doesn't have the Thunderbolt 5 ports and it's got a slightly slower chip, but for my uses, it hasn't really made a difference. There hasn't been enough upgrades on the M4 Pro chip for me to upgrade this machine to the M4 Pro, but there's enough differences in both of these machines that it's worth covering if you use these machines as portable work computers, so let's dive in. If you're new here, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeff Fagan. I'm a filmmaker and content creator based in South Florida. And on this channel, I talk a lot about tech in relation to making content, whether it's filmmaking type tutorials or making content for YouTube, web-based stuff. I have you all covered here. So if you're interested in that, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos from the channel. So as I said, I have been using the MacBook Pro that I've had for about a year and a half and the M4 MacBook Air since it came out a few months ago. And I do really like both machines. So the M4 MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro have somewhat different user audiences. The base model M4 MacBook Air is probably the best value MacBook you can get here in 2025. And it's really powerful for the money, but it has some trade-offs, especially not a lot of internal storage. And then the MacBook Pro has a lot more power to it. Even the M3 Pro version that I have, it's got a lot more GPU cores. It's got a little bit more RAM. It's got a little bit more base memory. It's got the better screen. So for professionals, a lot of times the MacBook Pro is going to make a lot more sense. Now, in my use case, I've been doing a lot more content creation work over the past year and a half or so to where a MacBook Air has really made a lot more sense to me, especially because it's a little bit of a smaller machine. I don't need the better screen. I'm not really using my RED camera that often. I'm using cameras that have smaller file sizes that are 10-bit that the M4 MacBook Air can quite honestly handle really easily. But a few times a year, I do work on commercials that do require me to use my RED camera. And over the past month or so, as I've been traveling for work, I've been having to bring my MacBook Pro with me more, specifically because of me using my RED camera and having to edit a lot more, a lot more complex um, timelines with RED footage. That situation alone has had me not bringing both computers, but a lot of the times bringing one or the other computer on trips just based off of what I'm doing. So it's been helpful because it brought me to the conclusion of a few things. When it comes to using the MacBook Air on a lot of my trips lately, those kinds of trips are pretty much I'm not using the computer that much. If I'm doing some editing, it may be at night where I'm just editing some basic YouTube content or some podcast work, and I'm doing it at the end of the day. I'm not on my computer all day. And then when it comes to not editing stuff like productivity, uh, the MacBook Air has been great for that just because of how light this thing is. And it's why I've been bringing it most of the time. But then when I ran into an issue was when I did a RED project and I did have to do some editing while I was gone, and when I started getting into some more complex editing in DaVinci Resolve, the red footage, once I colored it, started to stutter on the M4 MacBook Air to where it didn't really stutter at all. The M3 Pro MacBook Pro handled the red footage really well with multiple layers of video, with a lot of effects. I mean, this does have almost twice the amount of GPU cores in it, so it does make sense that it's going to handle red raw footage a little bit better. Now, the other thing that I noticed is on some of these trips, I've been gone for about a week at a time, and those, I tend to be on my computer a little bit more while I'm gone than the trips where I'm just gone for two or three days. Now, if I had to choose one or the other, because I think that's why a lot of you may be watching this video, why choose the MacBook Pro over the MacBook Air, etc. I think it depends on your use case. So if you're traveling all the time, but you're not on your computer all the time, but you need a computer for certain tasks, the MacBook Air is the way to go just because of how small, light it is, uh, and 
the affordability factor. You could pick these up for around $900 on Amazon. It went on sale for $850, so you can probably get that sale occasionally, although you, you have to check. At the time of this video, it's $900. But it's really affordable where I paid like $2,600 for this MacBook Pro. And when I first got it, I wasn't using it to its full ability because I still had an iMac that could handle a lot of the work. And it really took me almost eight months to where I started using this for high end projects and that's why when I got the M4 MacBook Air I know I keep bringing one and bringing one when I got the M4 MacBook Air I was surprised on how much work I could do on this when it comes to my video editing I'd say about 80% of my video editing work I could do on my M4 MacBook Air which is really impressive for how affordable a machine it is but as I said, when it came to editing the red files, that's where it kind of opened my eyes to where if I'm gonna be on the computer a lot more during a trip, sometimes having multiple ports on the MacBook Pro so I can not only use multiple card readers but also have SSDs attached and have enough USB-C Thunderbolt ports to cover pretty much everything I have without having to have any kind of USB-C Thunderbolt dock has been really nice because there are only two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the M4 MacBook Air. So for the most part, I've only been able to plug in one SSD and one memory card reader at a time on this machine. Now, obviously, the MagSafe port has helped in that because now I also don't need to use one of these Thunderbolt 4 ports to charge the computer. But still, when it comes to a more professional video, video workflow, the two ports haven't quite been enough because I'm usually using two different cameras while I'm on set and I want to be able to just grab both of the memory cards and put them onto an SSD as quick as possible because a lot of the times it's the end of the day we're trying to get offset I need to make sure that I have everything before we walk offset and make sure that there's nothing that maybe we missed or have to get again. So having the multiple ports on the MacBook Pro unknowingly while on set has helped a decent amount. And then also having the nicer screen in a slightly bigger screen for productivity and stuff like that, it really hasn't made a difference for me. But when it comes to actually looking at the red files and doing some color grading, anything that the screen, the quality of the screen is really important, that's where the MacBook Pro has really shined. And even though I'm bringing the MacBook Air most of the time, I'd say out of the past six trips I went on, four of the trips I brought the MacBook Air, uh, and then that last trip where I was using the Red a lot, I realized I needed to start bringing my MacBook Pro with me. And so the last two trips that I went on that I was gone for about a week, I brought the MacBook Pro with me, and I was glad that I did because I was able to do a lot of my heavy duty work while away. So I think when it comes to who a MacBook Pro is for, who a MacBook Air is for, it's kind of all in the name. I think if you're more of a pro user and you are thinking about getting a MacBook Air, but maybe you think you probably should get a MacBook Pro, whether it's for the screen, the better GPU performance, if you get the Pro chip or the Max chip, the more RAM, the more internal storage, this has you covered if you're more of a pro user. I know a lot of pros that use the M4 MacBook Air. Heck, I've been using the M4 MacBook Air a lot. And so if you're a pro video shooter, it really depends on the cameras that you're actually using on set. So if you're using something like a Sony FX30 or any of the Sony mirrorless cameras, Canon mirrorless cameras that are shooting 10-bit video, Osmo Pocket 3, 10-bit, 8-bit cameras, the M4 MacBook Air is gonna be more than fine and you'll be able to get away with it. But it's when you start using the more professional cameras like the Red Komodo, any of these cameras that shoot raw video, that's where you are going to have to step it up to the MacBook Pro. Can you do it on the M4 MacBook Air? Yes, but all of the processes are gonna take much longer, especially when it comes to real-time playback on the raw footage. You're gonna have to bring your timeline down to 720. You're not gonna have the greatest playback resolution, and that may make a difference, especially if you're filming with 6K, 8K, and you just need to have that better playback performance. The MacBook Pro is gonna be where it's at. So those are my raw and honest thoughts of using the M4 MacBook Air and the M3 Pro MacBook Pro in the field. They each have their own use, and I like being able to bring around the M4 MacBook Air in the field a little bit more than the MacBook Pro, just because I don't have to worry as much. It's durable, I have these cases on it so they can get banged around in the field. That's not really a huge issue, but then when I need the performance 
I have the MacBook Pro. Now, after using both of these machines, it did make me realize that I do still need a MacBook Pro, unfortunately. As much as I love the M4 MacBook Air, and it does most of the work for me, occasionally, for my use, there are some gigs that will require me to use this MacBook Pro machine. But if you're not in a situation like me, you're not using RED cameras, you're using cameras like I spoke about before, then you totally can get away with the M4 MacBook Air. And many years ago, you could not even edit that kind of video on the MacBook Air. And I think that's why so many of us are so happy, surprised with the performance of these MacBook Airs and the Apple Silicon lineup, just because you can do a lot of editing on these machines where you couldn't before. But I think the main thing for a lot of you looking to pick up a M4 MacBook Air for video editing, just need to realize is it is going to be based off of what cameras you use. But I think the majority of you, you're using cameras that will work fine with the M4 MacBook Air. But I wanted to come out with this video because I have been getting a lot of questions on, from Red users primarily on is the M4 MacBook Air good enough? And I've done a video in the past where I show you how to change the timeline settings on the M4 MacBook Air to be able to smoothly edit Red footage. And if you're in a situation where like, for whatever reason, you have to use an M4 MacBook Air or an M4 Mac Mini, and for whatever reason, you just can't get an M4 Pro chip, you can't get any of the higher end Pro Mac Studio chips, you have to use the M4. It is possible, it's just not ideal. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. And until next time, my name's Jeff Fagan, thank you for joining me as always, and I will catch you in the next video. Oh,